Well guys, most of you would have heard that we have had a 8.2 quake strike off the coast of Chile and there has been some waves that have been already um, felt along the coastline and there has been some structural damage to buildings uh, around the area as well but you know information is still coming in so that's quite a large earthquake an 8.2 and it just happens to be after this X1 that we had two days ago because uh, if we remember uh, we had not a lot of solar activity for about a week and a half and then suddenly we got that X1 and now we have a 8.2 quake and so this is cause and effect in action and this is also going to be you know felt on all the causal planes you know this amount of energy being released and playing out is going to be felt so very interesting and also interesting that I saw this information on um, universe today uh, on this website sot.net and they go on to say that a newly discovered star uh, of magnitude plus 10.9 has flared to life in the constellation Cygnus the Swan. Oh wow! So it just happens to come to life around the area of the Dark Rift because that's where Cygnus is located right on the Dark Rift right near Draco. Oh and Draco just happens to be aligned with Angkor Wat one of the largest temples or temple structures on the planet and Cygnus also aligns to the three pyramids of Giza just like the three pyramids of Giza also align to Orion's belt. So both are significant because symbolism is layered. There are multiple stories going on here and so very interesting that we've got a star now signalling uh, it's reacting to something to brighten uh, in an electric universe that's what you could imagine and so I just thought I'd bring that to your attention and it's very interesting the mythology that goes with um, the swan Cygnus or leader now remember that the information has been pretty much destroyed by the Romans so most of the Greek mythology has been bastardized and corrupted so you just have to try and get some information from what you can find within what's left of the mythology and so it basically goes on to say that Leda was admired by Zeus and was seduced um, in the guise of a swan and as a swan Zeus fell into her arms for protection from a pursuing eagle. Now we know when we look at the symbolism that the eagle is representing Kether, representing that part of the divine intelligence or the creator. So I find that interesting and I also find it interesting that it is also in relation to the birth of um, the twins onto foundation in eggs and they're saying that they were half mortal and half divine but the stories change well of course they do because Rome has corrupted them so basically the reason is the half mortal and half divine is because they're talking about the two parts to who we are we are all half mortal and half ethereal and we all have divinity within us and as we now know some of mankind are half mortal and half divine they are the divine race so this is what this information is showing and so I find it interesting now that when we're paying attention to the larger cycles and we've come to the top of the pond and we're not just the little frog at the bottom of the pond we can see that there are actually very interesting um, you know events that are taking place out in these areas of the
galactic um, environment. So other than that, I went and had a look at what else we could find was happening for the month of April. And I have to just clarify that not all these um, blood moons are in the one month that I had thought uh, was the case. Um, it's over a few months. So there is a blood moon, but it's uh, in relation to a few that are happening. And they do also occur in April. And it's interesting because there are a couple things that occur in April which give me um, the 15th of April as something that is significant because Mars is at its closest approach since 2008. Now, 2008 was when this solar cycle 24 started. So I find that interesting that we now see Mars again at its closest approach. But not only that, on the same night we have the total lunar eclipse and um, this is only going to be seen in North America. They are going to have a ringside seat for the total lunar eclipse and the full moon becomes transformed into a mottled reddish ball for 78 minutes and it becomes completely immersed in the shadow of the earth. Well, that's quite interesting. And then it goes on to say that we have the uh, Lyrid Meteor Shower on the 22nd and that's from um, the area of the Star Vega and connected to uh, Thatcher's Comet. But interestingly, we have a ring eclipse that nobody will see. Now these are the ring of fire solar eclipses where it gets blacked out except for the outside and it looks like this ring of fire. And this is going to happen in the Antarctica but I'm very interested to see that it's going to happen on the 28th of April and the 29th. And that those Antichrist um, Vatican Jesuit are having their saint you know, in their canonization on the 27th of those two uh, disgusting pieces of shit, Pope John Paul II and uh, John the 23rd. Pope John the 23rd. So, very interesting the timing. You know, they love all these planetary alignments. And sometimes, as I say, you don't see them actually play out in a way that you expect. Sometimes, other things occur that lead up to other events, you know. Um, so to just think that we can uh, understand what is going to take place is really, you know, um, something I think that puts you in a position of weakness because you always want to account for that that you are not prepared for. And so um, I always just like to look at anything that is interesting and then I just have that preparation and readiness about that timing. If it passes and uh, nothing seems to have you know, happened to me on any physical level or anywhere else in the environment, then fine. Um, but sometimes if I do see events play out, well then it's just good that you've known in advance and prepared. So this is what I'm just looking for because, um, you know, it just seems that we are in times where we really need to understand that they do not have our benefit, um, you know, or the benefit of the good of the all. So again, it just seems that there's some interesting information coming out about April. Um, we've got this um, quake now. And uh, we can see that we've got these um, boys in event mode measuring um, disturbances in the water, sea level. So, yeah, you know, as I say, who knows? But I'm just paying attention. Looks interesting to me. Just keep looking at everything. Just seems to keep looking very interesting. Um, and other than that, guys, just keep a watch of everything. Looks like the um, electron flux is still being funky um, and we've had you know a little bit of um, you know energy flux here as well and um, this M 
So, you know, I just don't even like to try and guess what the sun is doing anymore. You know, we might see it just completely flat line again and everything just settle right down. Just don't know. But for now, just going to keep watching what's unfolding and just relaying what I'm seeing in that way, observational. And uh, hopefully, yeah, it all eventually makes some fucking sense. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it here and I'm going to post all of the links underneath. And as always, peace out.